Mongolia is a big white spot for me on the map. The only things that I know about it is that it's a Buddhist country, there are steppes, there are nomads living there and that Mongolia had close relations with the Soviet Union and that there is lots of Soviet heritage there. So I decided to explore Mongolia to find all of that and to learn more. I started my trip in Russia on the border with Mongolia in the capital of Buryatia Republic Ulan-Ude. Buryat people live here. They are Mongolian ethnic group that has many common things with the Mongols. Religion, language, cuisine, traditions, Siberian climate. I knew that in Buryatia there is the biggest Lenin's head and yeah, it's quite big. Здравствуйте, товарищ Ленин. When your face is frozen right after you're outside and when your camera freezes after three minutes, you know you're in Siberia. I think it's time for Buzas now. It was just one hour flight to the capital of Mongolia, Ulan Bachar. The city is located at the altitude of 1350 meters and it's surrounded by the mountains. I decided to take a look at it from the top. At the observation deck there was a monument devoted to Mongolia-USSR friendship. In 1944 Mongolia asked to join the Soviet Union, and even though the request was rejected, the relations between countries has remained very close, and Mongolia's leadership tried to model a copy of the Soviet system in it. Mongolia was called 16th unofficial republic of the USSR because of very strong and close relations. And in Ulaanbaatar you can see lots of buildings that are Soviet. Hushure, Mongolian street food, very easy. Flatbread inside, meat fried in lots of oil. Reminds me of Russian chiburek and Mongolian salty tea, of course. Unherstachen, 
which means really good. Mongolia is a country of nomads and steppes, and to see the real country you need to go outside of the capital. The great teams of nomad travel tours with Go Mongolia Tourism Committee picked me up to get me in the remotest settlements and some middle of nowheres of Mongolia. Just what I like. Go Mongolia! <laughs> Swastikas come from Mongolia and it was one of the tribe's uh, symbol and they used it to mark their horses to like to make sure that they other people know and like if other people take it like so they would know that it's their horse from the mark on the back side of the horse and Hitler was like a really was a fan of like Ching Sang and like he, he I think he found this symbol meaningful like more than the rest from studying Ching Sang and then he took it and he tilted he tilted it a little bit to the side and then he started using it for his Nazi party. The dick statue is facing towards southeast direction and the south in southeast direction is like a valley and the valley is like a similar to a female organ which is like a vagina and it's facing towards the vagina and it represents fertility and when the Mongolians can't like have kids we come here and pray to the dick, dick to be more fertile and like have more kids uh, we have statues like this throughout the country meet togo the guide hello so you said that you also were in buryatia recently yeah it was like a year ago i was in the Ulangwood. i uh, went to see Baikal lake yeah how was it? Uh, Baikal to me feels like a uh, Mongolia, like but like not like, like inside Russia. Like Baikal, the name of the lake is like, it. It means nature in Mongolia, so oh. it's named in Mongol. It's, it has Mongolian name. Was Buryatia similar to Mongolia? It has its like similarities, but like it has its own kind of like different style of Buddhism, which is like a kind of different from Mongolian Buddhism. And Breton language is like similar to Mongolia, but like the words, some words have like a similar meaning, but it's like totally different language. How did you get around? Do you speak Russian? I had to study like in high school, I had to study like Russia for like two or three years. It was like mandatory. Like I think nowadays they stopped maybe, but like in some school you have to like learn Russia. So in Mongolian schools you have to learn Russian? Yes, uh, I think it's like influence that like left by the Soviet Union. So we're visiting some monasteries on our way and uh, could you tell about uh, Buddhism that you follow in Mongolia? Mongolian Buddhism is like really different from other Buddhism. It's kind of different. It has its own elements and like but monasteries are beautiful and like it's like in extraordinary beautiful natural places. For example, this monastery uh, not built on built by destroying any any portion of the land. It was built on top of the land and it used it's like the natural rocks to make sculptures out of it this is called oat and it is one of the must-have things on the lunar new year celebration so what we do here is like we are celebrating the coming of spring so like everybody is gathering up in your at their elderly and like everyone who comes inside the fam it comes here and like take a knife and like take a little bit from the side and put it in their mouth and like eat a little bit of it but we don't eat the whole thing we eat it after the lunar new year this is called tavgingide and it's like hard pastry called olbo and we make this to show that we have went through the winter well healthy and 
uh, fortunate. So, uh, how do you eat it? So you touch the bottom of the plate, showing respect, and then you take one from the top. It's a dried curd, it's hard, and it's full of calcium, it's good for your teeth. You said curd? Curd. In the region of Bashkortostan, Bashkirs also eat curd. Mm -hmm. It's a dried cheese. Yes. I guess it's common for all nomadic people. Yeah, it's very, very um, hard, like you are eating chalk. <laughs> but it's tasty. Yes, it's tasty. It's uh, a bit sweet mm -hmm. and kind of sour. Darhan city was built by the Soviet Union and it became the first city to be actually planned. There are no tourist attractions here, but we needed to stay for a night. I enjoy it here though. Probably right now I'm the only tourist in this city. Back in my country I'm considered not cool because I go to places like this. In Russia you need to go to Paris, San Francisco, New York, and everyone would be jealous of you. And people look at me strangely when I say that I travel in Russia, Russian provinces, regions, or Mongolia, but I enjoy off the beaten path so much. It feels like you're making this path yourself and not go on a path where everybody goes. Look at this and the steps and mountains. Mongolia is a country with the smallest population density in the world. Moreover, almost half of the country's population lives in Ulaanbaatar, while other areas are sparsely populated settlements or herders that live in the steppes. We drove for another several hundreds of kilometers and reached a settlement of a half-nomadic herder's family. Here I am in the steppes of Mongolia riding a horse with a Mongol nomad. Can it get even more Mongolian? Тэгэхээр <laughs> Одоо сүүл үед бол яг доктор докторт жоохон юм араа сойрын шүүд болж байна. Би л баг настаас бол дандаа нүүдэлч амьдралаар байна. How nomadic means that you are moving very often. How often is it? Одоо бол ер нь харьцаа одоо манайх 100 цусан даа нөхөд энэ дэс нэг 15 км 13 км ийн цаана ингээд очиад тусаад намарччаад энэ чинь өвлж хавч байна. Одоо бол 2 хоног нэмж. Why do you need to move in summer and autumn? Энэ малын хэн нөгөө аль их ич тичэл дөө ногоо дагжил нь. Аль сайхан ногоо таага зэргэл дагж нь. In summer do you live Би нар тэр нэг олон хатуутай байх та бүр 4 жилийн хугацаанд жил жилд нэг удаа нэг зун хөтөл бүр 1000 км төр нүүсэн 4 жил 4000 км төр нүүсэн бүр ингээд бүр хол одоо ингээд Улаанбаатар дайраал баруун тэшэнд нүүсэн зүүн тэшэнд нүүсэн Nowadays nomadic life is not that popular and I guess it becomes less and less in Mongolia you can now easily live 
in a city where you have absolutely everything, all the comfort, why do you choose to stay nomadic? <laughs> It's a drinking curd. We make a curd like this out of yogurt and then we like boil water and then add this and add sugar and then salt. But this one did, we didn't add any like, sugar and like a fat drinkable curd yes. for the first time I see it and it's it for good for like uh, mm. for your immune system and this is what like we drink when we get like a flu and like mm. yeah tastes like uh, liquid curd this is a uh, sheep's uh, knuckle bone and then this is horse this is goat this is camel and this is sheep and so this is like a bone picking game put everything in your hand like this and then you do this preferably more spread out but it's fine and then you see like uh, two same the same ones and then you flick it like this so like these two are like both camels right and you like flick like this preferably hitting the other one but you don't want the like the one that you flicked touching the other one then you put it here Thing. Yes. So like uh, you see like these ones are touching right? Members of the herders' family were up very early to look after their cattle. They have a very busy day ahead. Meanwhile, I headed to my next destination. We arrived in a very small settlement to see a school where herders' families' kids go to study. hundred children that come from this village but also from different nomads that we far from here uh, about 200 children come from nomadic families and they stay here in a dorm oh, amazing now in Mongolia they only use Cyrillic alphabet but from 6 till the last grade they still learn the ancient Mongolian script and from 7th to 9th grade I was told that they uh, study the Russian language Ты говоришь по-русски? Спасибо This is the museum of school and I'm really surprised to see a Soviet uniform here. Our parents used to wear this and uh, as a graduating student at 9th and 11th grade I also wore the same, exactly the same uniform without a communist flag. And also the Soviet backpack I had almost exactly the same backpack and after school we used to sit on it and go ice sliding and i guess here they did the same to this backpack when i was a child it didn't feel this tight but in my school we used to have exactly the same tables with this thing is so this is a Soviet table as well and uh, we also used to have exactly the same notebooks it's like I'm back in my childhood in the Mongolian village <laughs> who would know? <laughs>
really surprised by how modern and nice a school for Herder family's children was, as it was located, as usual in Mongolia, in the middle of nowhere so far from big settlements. I'm very grateful to Nomad Glamping Tours and Go Mongolia for organizing this for me. Without them, I could never get such unique experiences and wouldn't see the real country outside of Ulaanbaatar. Nomad Glamping Team organizes glamping tours all over Mongolia, and with them you can travel to the remotest places while staying in comfortable and warm heated tents or with local herder families. Follow the link in the description to explore the best of Mongolia. And by the way, I have a tradition on my channel to hide Russian matryoshka dolls in places that I go to. This time I left it at the guides of Nomad Glamping, and the first person to join a tour with them will get the doll. Nomads keep moving for different reasons – avoiding enemies, searching pastures for their livestock, or because of unstable food and water supply. I don't have any of these problems that would push me to change locations so often, but I still choose to be nomadic. I haven't had a physical home for many years by now. But what if I don't have a goal to arrive anywhere? What if the journey itself is the goal, and the way itself is my home? Oh, my